Welcome to the iKit Chem channel where we help you learn chemistry easily by showing you how to do problems. Um, today's video is on a question regarding the commutation between operators. So let's talk about, let's uh, read through the question. We'll get to the solution. The question is, find the commutator for the operators x squared and d squared dx squared. Looks like a fairly short problem, but before we talk about the solution, let's figure out what a commutator means. So to understand commutators and what they are, we have to go back to the operators that we have in quantum mechanics. So we said that in quantum mechanics, there are these different linear operators, and um, you will see that you will learn that the each uh, different types of measurement you can make on the system is represented by a different operator. So, uh, for example, if you can, um, if you have two different operators, let's say A and B, you can apply the operator A to a function f of x, or you can apply the other operator b to a function, to the same function f of x. In general, these two are different operators and they will generate different functions after they operate on f. So for, for example, the first one we call g of x and the second one we call h of x. And in general, they are not the same. Now let's consider if you take the first line and after you operate on f with a you can then operate on the result of that with b and so that is equivalent to operating b on g and you can also consider for example operating on the result of the second line after you operate b on f you can then operate A on the result of that, which is the same as that, and then A operated, operated on H of X is in general a different thing. So if you look at the result of these two, in general you see that they there is no reason why these two should be the same, because A and B are different, and so when they operate on F in different orders, then the result are in general not the same. But sometimes there are actually pairs of operators A and B in quantum mechanics, which actually um, that particular pair, actually the result of these operations A first and then B versus B first and then A doesn't actually make a difference. So in the case that the order of the operation A first B versus B first A doesn't make a difference. Those operators are set to commute with each other. So you see in quantum mechanics, the question of whether operators commute or not is, is not asking whether these operators, like they, they go to work by bus or by, by car. The word commute in quantum mechanics and more generally in mathematics is really asking, does the order of two operations matter? If it does not matter, then the operators commute. So if you ask, are these two the same? And if the result is that they are not, then we say A and B do not commute. And on the other hand, if the answer is yes, A and B, uh, the the, the result does not make any difference depending on the order of the operation, then if, if these two are the same, then A and B are set to commute. So um, the reason why the, this commutation is important in quantum mechanics is because it turns out that every measurement that you can make on the quantum mechanical system can be represented by a, uh, a an operator. So if you can 
uh, make two different measurements simultaneously on the same quantum mechanical system, then the requirement is that the operators representing these two different measurements must commute. Uh, on the other hand, if you have two measurement operators that do not commute, then quantum mechanics tells you that you cannot simultaneously make these two measurements on the same system. It's just quantum mechanically impossible. So uh, we will see examples of that uh, in other problems later. But for this particular problem, it's important to understand that operators, some of these operators commute, sometimes they don't commute. It's important to figure out, uh, um, to understand how to figure out whether they uh, commute or not. And so uh, the easiest way to figure out whether two operators commute or not is to actually explicitly compute the difference. So in this case, what is called the commutator which symbolically is written with a pair of square brackets. So the commutator A comma B is defined as A B minus B A. Right. So the commutator is really explicitly representing the difference between the two different orders. And of course, if the commutator is explicitly zero, then A and B commute. Otherwise, A and B don't commute. So by calculating the commutator of two operators, we can easily figure out whether they are commuting operators or not. So, um, so the example in this problem is uh, about that. So the two operator that the two operators that we are interested in is uh, x squared, and uh, the second one is d squared sorry, is uh, d squared dx squared. So what we really want is to compute the commutator between these two operators. And so the question is, what is that? So we can write that out. If you write that out, you see that this is x squared, d squared dx squared minus uh, d squared dx squ squared x squared. Now, it, if you're not used to looking at operator equations, these operators look a little funny sometimes. The reason is because the function that the operator operates on are actually missing. So, in order to really precisely interpret this correctly, Sometimes it might be useful to put the function that these operators operate on back into the equation. That is, it's best to think about this operator operating on some arbitrary function f, and that is, of course, equal to that. So now you see the last term basically means the second derivative of the product x squared multiplied by f. Right. So in order to commute, compute the commutator, we'll just leave f in. And then at the end, we'll just uh, remove f to uh, return it into an operator form. OK, so what we will now do is to just look at the second term, which is that term. So uh, remember that that has a minus sign on the outside. OK, so let's just take a look at that term. The rest of the problem is really fairly straightforward, even though it's just tedious differentiation. So I am going to just write that term minus d squared dx squared xf. And we will write that term out explicitly. So first of all, we will turn that into a two-step differentiation. 
and then we will differentiate the inside first uh, by using the product rule. The derivative of x squared times f is 2x df dx plus x squared, oh sorry, 2xf plus x squared df dx. And now we need to continue, uh, so I'm going to split that into two terms, d dx of 2x times f minus d dx x squared df dx. Okay, so we will continue to differentiate. Uh, this 2 right there, we can bring out because it's a constant. So we have a minus 2 multiplied by, now the derivative of x times f. The first term is a f, the second term is x df dx. And now the second term, uh, again using the product rule, the first term is 2x df dx, and the second term is x squared d squared f dx squared. Okay, so we can now expand everything, minus 2 times f, minus 2x df dx minus 2x df dx minus x squared d squared f dx squared. So you see that this term right there is uh, appears twice. So we can put those together. So this is equal to minus 2f minus 4x df dx, and finally minus x squared d squared f dx squared. So now you notice that this term, this whole thing, is basically just that thing, including the minus sign. So there is another term in front for the commutator. So if you write down the entire thing, then the commutator would be x squared d squared f dx squared plus this entire object. So whichever the commutator is, is x squared d squared f dx squared minus 2f minus 4x df dx minus x squared d squared f dx squared. So finally, you see that this uh, term cancels. So the commutator, I should write an f here because this is a commutator having applied to f. So this is minus 2f minus 4x df dx. So now you can group everything together. So this is minus 2 minus 4x d dx, and so this is applied to f. So from this you can clearly see that whichever the operator is, or the commutator is, which is this right in front of the f, must be equal to that. So, um, so that's the end of the problem. Uh, this problem is mostly just math, but I want you to um, try to understand the idea of the of the commutating uh, commuting operators and what the commutator actually means. So in the future, this commutator will show up in a number of different ways uh, in uh, in the other problems that we will see later on in quantum mechanics. Okay, so if you um, enjoy this video, please uh, consider subscribing to the channel and uh, please uh, like this video.